Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here, and I am live from my Beehive studio this morning. Normally, I come to you on Tuesday morning, and I'm a little bit behind this week. I didn't feel very well on Monday, and I just couldn't get it together to get everything ready for Tuesday. So I just said I am going on a 24 hour delay. And so I am here on Wednesday, um, but next week I will be back at the normal time on Tuesday. But uh, I'm so glad uh, if you can join me. And if you're watching this on YouTube, know that I am not live, but um, I love it when you leave me a comment on my um, uh, YouTube upload um, and um, just uh, know that I'll answer your questions there. So anyway, today is Casing Tuesday, and that's the day when we take a card out of the catalog and give it a makeover. And the thing that I love most uh, about Casing Tuesday is that it gets me out of my comfort zone. This is a great learning tool, even for us experienced stampers. I've been stamping now probably over 15 years, and I have a certain style. It's, it tends to be clean and simple, very organized, and um, I, I'm not much of a technique girl. Techniques tend to be messy, um, but it is really good for me to get out of my comfort zone. So when I saw today's card, I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to struggle with this one, but the struggle is good, and um, that's why I hope you'll join me as well um, and uh, do the makeover card with me. We have a Facebook group for that that you can join in. If you're looking for the links to anything that I'm talking about today, just look in the description of my video. I have links to everything that you could possibly need and if you don't see it there I also have a list to a contact form where you can just pop me a question or post in the comment section I'll also answer your questions there all right I am going to turn the camera around and I'm going to show you the card that we are copying and I'm going to do a technique for you which I very rarely do but I'm quite happy with the way this technique turned out today so I hope you like the way that I do it. I um, often when I'm doing a technique, I you know I'm I might look at someone uh, how someone else does it, but I also always kind of go with do some experimenting and do some of my own twists on things. So I think this might be a different way um, to do a watercolor wash than some other people might do it. So have a look and see if you like it. Let me turn my camera around. Oh, we've got a sunny day today here in the Boston area. Um, the sky is blue. It's like a gorgeous day, but don't let that sunshine fool you. It is bitterly cold out there this morning. Um, hello to everyone that's joining me. I have someone from Wisconsin and someone from New York. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to rotate this down. Okay, so this is the card we're giving a makeover to. There's not a lot to this card in terms of layers, but there's a very obvious watercolor wash technique, and it, it is beautiful. I think they may have used, and I didn't look this up. I should have looked it up for you. Um, they, they could have used the watercolors. They might have used our... Um, Oh, what is it called? Those um, color uh, crystal -y thingies that are across the room. Brusho. Brusho. They might have used Brusho, but they could have also just done a watercolor wash with the current in colors, the 2018 2020 in colors. I decided that I was going to do a slightly different watercolor wash technique. This one, oh my gosh, it is very detailed and I, I love it, but. Oh, it, that would be really hard for me to do. So I thought I'm just going to do a watercolor wash technique, but I'm also going to use the ink colors that are going to be retiring soon. I wanted to showcase them uh, because we're going to be losing them soon. And I um, just want to make sure everyone knows that uh, they should try and get these colors now. In April, they will be on the retiring list. And once they get on there, they become while supplies last. And the things that sell out the fastest typically are the cardstock and the ink refills. So if you have any of these colors, this would be powder pink, berry, burst fresh fig, 
or lemon on twist those colors um, and then we have one more which is tranquil tie that I haven't used on this card um, those colors they if you have them and you don't have an ink refill if you like them or love them you should get an ink refill now so you have it on standby so you can continue to use that color in the future and um, make sure you have enough cardstock of that color if you like it I think lemon lime twist especially is um, an unusual color that a lot of people fell in love with I know I fell in love with it and um, I did not like it the first time I saw it. I did not like it at all. Okay, so on to my technique. Oh, you know one thing that I didn't do is I lost my stamp set. Let me see if I have it over here. No. I, I just, yeah. Ah, here it is. Okay. Sorry. I had to walk across the room. I was going to get this out before him. This is the Amazing Life stamp set. It is part of the Amazing Life bundle. It also, um, if you do the bundle, it comes with the stitched rectangular, rectangle stitch framelits. That's the one. Um, so you can bundle these together. I love, love, love these framelits. This is such a beautiful stamp set too. So I use those um, today on my card. Okay, so we're going to do a watercolor wash technique. So I have taken a piece of watercolor paper and I they come in sheets of nine inches by six inches. So I cut that sheet in half. So this piece is four and a half by six inches. We're going to be watercolor washing on the whole sheet. And then um, afterwards, I'll cut it down so it will fit a regular size card front. So this four and a half by six will become four and a quarter by five and a half when it's done but it's nice if you can just wash 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 over the whole thing and then cut it down afterwards all right so you're going to also need an aqua painter you're going to need sponge daubers and you're going to need your ink pad colors so i'm using lemon lime twist i'm using fresh fig Berry Burst and Powder Pink. All right, so I'm gonna prep my watercolor paper first. And for this particular technique, I do recommend watercolor paper. I don't think you could do this with Whisper White or Shimmery White. Um, so this probably would not be a technique to try to do it differently. You could try it, but I think it definitely needs the watercolor paper because I'm really, I am saturating this with some water. So I've got my aqua painter. I'm using the big brush, okay? And I'm gonna prep my paper first. And what I like to do is I like to just rub clear, plain water all over one side of this. Get it somewhat wet. It doesn't have to be super soaky wet. I am doing this on one side of the paper. This is going to be my back side of the paper, okay? The reason I do this is that way it helps with the curling issue that watercolor paper has. So if you wet both sides, see now it's curling on this side. Now I'm gonna flip it over to this side. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with this side. I'm adding water to just brushing it on, making it wet. And um, if you have, um, depending on what your surface is, you could do this on a plate or something because I've got um, like a vinyl surface here, so um, I'm not worried about getting it wet. But you'll probably wanna protect yourself. So just make sure you've got that it's wet all over. Just holding it up to the light, just making sure that I've got, okay. So then we're gonna take the first color and just throw the dauber around. Now, we need a uh, powder pink, so I'm gonna dip this into my powder pink and I'm just going to now rub this over the top. Um, powder pink's a light color, so you can get it pretty dark if you want. The next color we're using is Berry Burst. Berry Burst is quite dark, so I'm gonna 
go in the berry burst and then I'm going to daub some off because it was so bright and I didn't want that bright streak. See how bright this is? I'm just very gently going over. Blend a little bit into the powder pink. Okay. All right. And then we're going to go on to Fresh Fig. Pounce that in there. Fresh Fig, my Fresh Fig isn't too inky, so it's not too, too bright. Um, it's a good idea to test on that scrap piece of paper so you kind of get even intensities of the color. And then Lemon Lime Twist down here at the bottom. Okay, if you want to, go in and deepen the colors a little bit the ones that okay so now you can take your aqua painter again i'm going to start up at the bottom add some more water and now i'm going to blend up to the top and then come down and blend down and that is all i do for my watercolor wash really that's it now to stop it from going all over the place, sometimes there's a lot of water on here, you can just drop a tissue on top. And that does two things. It removes some of the color, but it also takes some of the, the moisture away so that it kind of stops blending. It gives it a different kind of look. So there is my beautiful watercolor wash background. I find this a little bit easier, especially if uh, I want a very uniform kind of look to do the sponge daubering first um, and then doing the blending afterwards. That way I can get kind of more of the color where I want it. So this is going to need to dry. And so I actually created another background already. Let me put these ink pads away so I don't stick my fingers into it. I created a separate background yesterday and I cut it down to the right size because as soon as this dries it's going to take probably an hour to dry so this is not a project a quick project um, but you can just set aside however many you want to make and then when it's dry you can cut it down to four and a quarter by five and a half all right so this is the background I made yesterday make sure my surface is dry um, you can see here on this background, I kind of got it pretty dark here with a berry burst, but that doesn't really matter because it's going to be mainly covered up and it still looks good. I tested it out yesterday with my greeting and it still looked good. So um, that is my dry background. I'm going to create the focal point now. So I'm going to bring in my big shot. And I need a scrap piece of the powder pink cardstock. Powder pink um, is the color that is um, the cardstock is retiring, just like the ink. Um, I've got this is the piece of paper that matches this framelit. The size is on my blog, so I could tell you the size, but I'd have to measure it. Um, so you just go on my blog, and it will tell you the size of framelit that I used. I've already rubbed my edges with wax paper. Um, because this has stitching on it, I like to rub it with a little bit of wax paper. Um, and that helps that stitching come out really nicely and it doesn't pull or tear. So um, if you want a nice cut with these, just take a moment and just rub it with a little wax paper over the edges real quick. That way the wax paper or the wax just is on the stitching rather on your whole piece of cardstock. Now you can stick this on here. Rectangle framelits, if you can, put them through on an angle. Um, it helps with um, um, so that the framelit doesn't warp. It also helps it go through the machine more easily. So I, I read recently that some people um, had really bad warpage on their rectangle framelits. And someone recommended um, the same technique that I've been using, putting it in on the angle. I was doing it because it helped going through the big shot more easily, but they recommended it so to help with the war pitch of the, uh, the framelits. Okay, so I've got my magnetic platform, cutting plate, cardstock, framelit, another cutting plate, and then this is gonna go through. 
And then let's see if this releases nice and easily. Look how nice and easily that releases. And the stitches are all nice and clean because we use that wax paper. And then this also comes off really easily because of that wax paper rubbing. And that is the only thing we need to cut. So let's hope I don't mess this up. Otherwise I'll have to go get another sheet or use the back side. All right, I've got my greeting. So happy to have you in my life already on a block. And I'm going to use my Momento Tuxedo Black ink pad. If you wanted uh, like a slightly darker black or a shiny black, you could also emboss this with black embossing powder. But I, uh, I am not doing that. I'm just gonna use my plain black. Make sure it's inky enough. And then just take a moment to align it, center it. I'm trying to center it, make sure it's somewhat centered. Okay. So then I'm gonna just take a few seconds to stamp this down. Use a little bit of pressure. I like to rock it a little bit from side to side, but not too much, just kind of, just a little wiggle because that helps it get to all the edges. Let me peel this off. Ooh, that looks pretty good. Not too bad for not being whisper white. Um, our colored cardstocks are a little bit more, um, I don't know if you want to call it porous or they have a little rougher texture than our smooth whisper white. So sometimes you need to take a little bit more time to make sure you get good contact onto the paper, especially with our black because it's a linen pad. So I want to just color in the happy and the um, this banner right here. And the best way to do that is with blends because they're nice and dark and pretty. I'm going to use, this is the Light Lovely Lipstick. So I'm fudging a little bit with the colors um, because we don't have Berry Burst. If we had a Berry Burst blend, so that's probably what I would use. But um, because of the watercolor wash isn't the same quite intensity as a regular berry burst, I think this color works really well. So I'm just going to color in. It's so nice to see how well blends do on light color cardstock. They really do a nice job. Look at how nice the color um, comes through and shows up on the cardstock. So it's kind of fun just to do a little coloring on the, so see how pretty that looks, on the happy. And then I'm going to take my light uh, granny apple green and do the banner. I'm using the bullet, the bullet tip, but you could also use like in this big section, you could use the brush tip, it might go faster. I'm not doing any shading. I'm just drawing it out. Okay, I might need to use the bullet tip on this end piece here just to get into the corner of the banner. There, that looks pretty good. All right. So we're gonna need a card base too. Let's get out all the layers that we have. A card base, and I decided to use powder pink for my card base. And um, it's just an 11 inch by four and a quarter sheet of cardstock. It's a half sheet of cardstock. And then I scored it in half at the five and a half inch mark. Um, and then let's just use a bone folder real quick to smooth down the fold. And I'm gonna use some glue to glue this piece of watercolor paper on there. My glue looks a little clogged this morning. Um, and I'll probably be pretty generous with this glue because this watercolor paper is quite porous. And I wanna make sure this is going to stick onto here. So I'll just, this will completely cover up the card front. The original card had an oval focal point and you could definitely also cut this in the, the oval shape. I just decided I was going to go with what was in the bundle 
because if I were a customer and I wanted to buy some things, I would want to try and use everything that came with the bundle. I might not have the ovals yet. So I thought, hey, let's switch this up a little bit and um, I use the rectangle and it, you know, it has a nice stitching around the edge. So, so then I'm just gonna take this and add this to the back some Tombow and then I'll just center this and make sure it's not crooked shift it a little bit you have a few seconds with the glue to get your focal point in the right place okay that looks pretty good and then I haven't used this embellishment yet but I just bought them they are so pretty they're in the annual catalog they're called blossom elements and they have three colors and when I saw them I thought this they would be perfect for this card so I thought we put one up here at the top and then one down here at the bottom kind of keeping with our theme and then we'll need the sprig punch this was in the holiday catalog and it carried over and I hope it carries over into the annual catalog because it's such a handy dandy punch to have I'm gonna take some Granny Apple Green cardstock and just punch out a sprig. And I'm going to use those as little leaves for my rose. Some scissors. So, let me see. I'll have to see what I did. I think I used, okay, I think I cut this one off like this. I just kind of cut off the ends and I cut this one off right here. So I just cut off kind of both ends a little bit. And this base piece, I mean, you could use it for another rose, but I'll probably just throw it out for now. And then grab some the leaf, leaf, leaves. I don't know, leaves. Oh, I can't speak this morning. Okay, just put a little Tombow on that. And I'll just add that up at the top right there and then this one right here let me pick it up make sure I angle it the right way okay this one oh we just lost our sunlight oh no it's back it's a temperamental morning here it's like I'm turning the lights on and off take a little Tombow down here Let's see. put that light there okay now we need some mini glue dots and my paper piercing too. Okay, so I'm going to find a mini glue dot on my roll, pick it off, and I will stick it on to the bottom of right here. I guess the other way you could do this, I'll show you the second way that you could do it. Um, so this is ready to stick on there like that. Isn't that pretty? So the other way you can do this, probably very simpler, you just find your next glue dot on the roll and then stick your rose right on top of that. Give it a little press. And there, now it's on the bottom. Okay, and then you can stick that one down there like that. There. Didn't that look pretty and happy with the little roses? I didn't have to do too much work for that at all. So this card will look different each time you do it, right? Um, just depending on the watercolor wash. There really isn't a wrong watercolor wash when you use all those different colors. They blend really nicely together. I wanted to try having the Tranquil Tide in there as well, but it just didn't look good. I just couldn't quite squeeze it in, so I just kind of kept those four colors together. and I think it turned out pretty nicely. Let me see, I'm gonna scroll up and see if there are any questions or comments that I needed to address Oops. before. Oh, come on. Oh, okay, I I hit a button and it, it uh, brought up a different screen. I'm like, and then my little fingers couldn't get it to turn off. Okay. You're, Stephanie, you're in Texas and it's cold there? <laughs> 
we need to define cold. Cold in Texas probably is not cold here. Cold in Texas is probably, oh, it's such a beautiful day. Let me wear my shorts out, right? I don't know about that, but uh, I know it's hard. It's hard when you live in the South. I did live in Tennessee for, oh, 12 years I lived in Tennessee. And you really do get it used to the um, warmer weather. So then when it just like, it gets somewhat cold, it, it feels really cold. Yeah, I, I get it. Um, Oh, Karen's asking me, did, did you get your days mixed up? Yes, Karen, you're all mixed up. No, actually, you're not mixed up. I'm mixed up. I'm a day behind. Um, I was uh, not feeling well on Monday, and that put me a day behind. I need, I usually put my blog post up on, on Mondays uh, for the next day, for Tuesday, and I just was not feeling well. I needed to go to bed early, and I was like, okay. It's okay, I'm gonna be a day behind this week and I'll just have to do that. So um, yeah, I'm a day behind. But next week I will be back on track with Tuesday. Uh, and uh, I have someone from Denmark and Albuquerque. How cool, I love it. Okay, let me turn this around. Okay. All right, guys. Well, I hope you're going to try this watercolor wash technique that I showed you today. It's really, I, I like the sponge daubers because you have a little bit more control over the color instead of, you know, when it comes, when you pick up the um, ink right out of the, um, from the ink pad, from the lid of the ink pad, um, I feel like you get varying amounts of water coming out and, um, I find it a little harder to control. I'm a little bit of a control freak, you can tell. So I, I need to have the control. I guess also the control for me comes in where I want to be able to show you something that you can reproduce. If I can't control my results reasonably well within certain parameters, then, you know, it's kind of just random. Oh, it worked for me this one time. And I can't really show you how to replicate it perfectly each time. So I also like the control factor so I can show you something and I can, within parameters, recreate the same thing over and over again. Um, so that's why I like using the sponge daubers a little bit more. Um, and, you know, if you do the water on the back and the front, then you don't have all that bowing happening with the, happening with the paper, with the watercolor paper. So it helps it um, just... Uh, with the thing so I'm, I'm just feeling this uh, watercolor paper right now that we just um, did earlier it's kind of half dry so another half hour maybe and this will be dry and ready uh, to be trimmed down and used on a card you just want to make sure that it that it is dry because um, you don't want to warp your um, card base and get the rest of your card wet so um, this one's almost ready and isn't that pretty like I think you could use this for a lot of different things. It kind of looks a little bit like a sunset and this looks like um, like ground or the earth and then this is the sunset coming up. So I guess you could do that too with like blue on the bottom and that could look like the ocean. That would be pretty too. So I think it's kind of a, a cool technique and I hope you'll share your card. Now, you don't necessarily have to do a watercolor wash um, or anything with that variegated background uh, for the card this week. You could just use the sketch with the oval in the center and go really easy, like do something else in the background. You don't have to do this. I, I just saw that watercolor in the background and I saw that that was kind of the feature of that card. So I wanted to recreate that a little bit, but um, there are a lot of samples already on our little group and you can go see and see the range of things that people have already done. Oh, and there's another Karen and she's in Arizona. Welcome, welcome. Um, I'm sorry, we are almost done and I didn't see any questions. So I am going to wish you a good rest of the week. And, um, oh, did you guys see my beautiful flower tutorial? Let me, let me go grab my box real quick. So my latest, oh, series, I guess I have to, it's not underneath, uh, my latest uh, series of tutorials with Hershey's Kisses. Uh, this is my Hershey's flower, and this one now is in a little, um, 
little box format. Isn't that cute? Um, this would make a great little gift. Um, this tutorial um, is available on my blog. Um, it's one of my free with purchase tutorials, or you can just buy the tutorial just outright. Um, but I, I have about one of these tutorials a month. Uh, it's kind of a reward for my customers to buy from me. And um, so this, that's what I reward them with is a free tutorial. But um, it's not cute. It's perfect like for spring, Easter, um, showers, lots of different events. I've got two sizes of boxes. So I've got a single flower box and then I've got the four flower box. So there's two options for you to do that or the flowers look great just on their own. There's lots of photos on my blog so you can take a look if you want to. All right guys, I hope you have a great week. I will see you back here at my regular time next week on Tuesday at 10 a.m. I hope to see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.